Hi everyone, Mrs V here. And today we are going to derive the combined gas law using Boyle's law, Charles law, and Guy Lussac's law. So let's get our maths on and get on that whiteboard. As the name suggests, the combined gas law is a gas law that's produced by combining the other gas laws. So let's have a look at the gas laws that we've learned so far. We know Boyle's law. And that said P1V1 equals P2V2. And we've learned Charles' law. Which was V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And we've learned Guy Lussac's law. Which was P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So we know all three of those are true. They've been established by experiment and they are laws, they are true. Let's have a look if we multiply P1V1 by V1 on T1 by P1 on T1. Let's do a little algebra. I love some algebra. So if we do Boyle's law and we multiply that by Charles law, and we multiply that by Guy Lussac's law, then because P1V1 is equal to P2V2, etc., 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 this must be equal to P2V2 times by V2 on T2 times by P2 on T2. And collecting up all of our terms, what we'll actually find is we have. P1 squared, V1 squared over T1 squared is equal to P2 squared, V2 squared over T2 squared. So what we're actually looking at when we have P1 squared, V1 squared over T1 squared is actually just P1V1 over T1 all squared and that's equal to P2V2 over T2 all squared and if we take the square root of both sides we have P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2 and that is the combined gas law. So now, technically, I guess you don't even need Boyle's law, Charles law, and Guy Lussac's law, because if you have this relationship, this will work for any gas as long as the number of moles of the gas is constant, then your pressure and volume and temperature at the, for the first one plugged into that formula will equal the pressure, the volume and the temperature for the other situation. This, however, brings about some algebra that you need to be able to do. Okay, so you need to be able to isolate any of those terms. And you cannot put this formula into a triangle to rearrange it. You must be able to do the algebra. So fairly easy. Supposing you wanted, let's look at an example. Supposing you wanted to isolate, or well, let's say you wanted to isolate V2 from this formula. 
you know that V2 has been multiplied by P2 and divided by T2. So to get V2 on its own, you're gonna to have to multiply both sides by T2. And that will leave you with P2 V2. And from there, you're going to need to divide both sides by P2. And then you've isolated V2. So some tricky algebra. I think possibly the trickiest is if you've got to isolate one of the two temperatures. So let's try. Let's try and isolate T1 from P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. I'm going to make use, now you could do a whole lot of cross multiplying here, but I'm going to make use of the fact that there is a law of ratio. If A over B equals C over D, then B over A equals D over C. You can just invert both sides. So I would invert both sides. Then it becomes really quite easy to remember we're isolating T1. T1 has been multiplied, has been divided by P1 V1. So all we've got to do is multiply both sides by P1 V1. You can see the algebra is a little bit more complicated than your usual. You know, I know you all love to do the triangle formula where you put your thumb over one of them and, you know, no, algebra. You can all do it. You've been doing algebra since you were very much younger than you are today. You can manage a bit of simple algebra. Okay, that's it for today. I will see you in the next video.